The RTX 5070 Ti is end of life. The RTX 5060 Ti 16 gigabyte is almost done as well, and things are looking pretty bleak across the graphics card market. Since returning from CES, we've had a few chats with AIBs and retailers to gauge the GPU situation, and here's what we've found out. So the headline story is that Nvidia has essentially killed off the GeForce RTX 5070 Ti from the market. ASUS, the largest NVIDIA AIB partner, explicitly told us this model is currently facing a supply shortage, and as such, they have placed the model into end-of-life status. This means ASUS has no plans to produce any more 5070 Ti models from this point forward. What is currently on store shelves is it from them. No more production of that card. Their GPU division is shifting focus towards other models they expect will continue to be supplied. This also aligns with what we have heard from local retailers here in Australia. Based on our discussions, we've learned that effectively, it is no longer possible to purchase 5070 Ti stock from partners and distributors. While retailers haven't been explicitly told that this card is end of life, there's simply no supply of it anymore, and these retailers are expecting this to continue throughout the first quarter of the year at the very least. We've been hearing rumours of this for a while now and have seen various reports from places like board channels suggesting this would happen, but this is the first time we've had it confirmed to us from an AIB directly. The original reason we reached out to every OEM was to gather supply for an RTX 5070 Ti roundup that Steve was planning to produce. Since the RTX 50 Super Series has been delayed or potentially even cancelled, we felt it would be a good idea to update viewers on which 5070 Ti is the best in the meantime. But no AIB had supply to participate in the roundup and ASUS specified the reason for that, which is its end of life status. This has quite a few ramifications and we're hearing it's not just the 5070 Ti that is affected. So let's explore that after this. Today's sponsor spot is brought to you by Thermal Grizzly and their new Duranaut High Performance Thermal Paste. Duranaut offers extreme long-term stability combined with outstanding thermal connectivity, and this has been achieved through a specially engineered silicon oil combined with aluminium microparticles and zinc oxide nanoparticles of various shapes. Duranaut isn't electrically conductive and won't harden over time. For best performance, you'll want to apply a very thin layer, and to help with this included is the TG Spatula Pro. The spatula's revised design allows for increased pressure during application, making it easy to spread a thin, even layer of Duranaut. So for more information, please check the link in the video description. We've also confirmed that RTX 5060 Ti 16 gigabyte supply has been significantly reduced to the point of being effectively discontinued, with ASUS also telling us this model is end of life and will not be produced moving forward. Retailers cannot easily purchase this GPU anymore in the 16 gig configuration, either from ASUS or other brands. Like with the 5070 Ti, this is expected to be the case for at least the remainder of Q1, if not longer. In fact, based on what ASUS is saying, it's more likely these models will not return. The only models from NVIDIA that are currently available for retailers to purchase in reasonable quantities are the 8GB cards, particularly the RTX 5060 and RTX 5060 Ti 8GB. These models are not end of life and will persist in the market for a while, as they appear to be the only versions receiving GPU supply. Based on what we've heard, we can confirm the report from board channels a few days ago is accurate. The RTX 5070 is being caught in the crossfire to some degree with reduced supply according to retailers, but this model hasn't yet reached the status of the 5070 Ti or 5060 Ti 16GB that are non-existent. With 12GB of VRAM compared to 16GB on those other cards, the 5070 is a bit more resilient to the current DRAM pricing issues and might have limited availability, but it is not being prioritised in the same way the RTX 5060 is. These changes to supply and the end-of-life status for some models are already having an impact on GPU prices. The RTX 5070 Ti has risen from $730 in November for the cheapest models to $830 US today, with a couple of models available from MSI and Gigabyte at that price. ASUS models are not listed on Newegg at all, at least for cards Newegg themselves are selling. In Australia, 5070 Ti pricing has climbed from $1,200 Aussie in November to around $1,400 today, and that's expected to increase further in the coming months. One retailer told us that for cards they actually can purchase, the cost increase is looking seriously gross. So that's going to be fun. 
The RTX 5060 Ti 16 gigabyte has risen from $400 US in November to around $460 today, which is only $30 above its MSRP, but that is expected to rise further with several base models already listed at $530 or above, including the ASUS Prime. In Australia, this model has increased in price slightly, but the cheapest units are starting to go out of stock, and we're currently being told that they will not be restocked at current prices. The RTX 5070 is still available for now at $550 US, but the amount of MSRP cards has significantly reduced. Just two are available for close to $550, with most coming in at $600 or higher. You can forget about getting a 5070 for $500 or less, like was the case during Black Friday last year. Those days are over. In Australia, we've been told current resupplies for this model are about 20% more expensive than they were in the fourth quarter of 2025, and this will be reflected in retail prices once supply for in-stock models runs out. Meanwhile, as we learned from speaking to those in the GPU industry, the 8GB cards are less affected. The RTX 5060 is readily available for $300 US, which is unchanged from November. In Australia, those cards are as cheap as $510, which is roughly the same as last year. The RTX 5060 Ti 8GB has started to climb and is currently available for $370 US, up from its $350 MSRP, but that's nowhere near as bad as the current 5070 Ti situation, and we expect this card to continue being available, though not necessarily at current prices. But again, this is to some degree due to existing supply that was purchased prior to GPU price increases. Retailers are also expecting around a 20% price increase for 5060 models in the near future, which is a similar percentage increase to higher tier models, but a lower overall dollar amount due to their low MSRP and of course less VRAM. Let's not even talk about pricing for the 5080 and 5090, which is disgusting at the moment. It's not even the case really where the 5070 Ti has been discontinued to make way for more 5080s. After all, both models have 16 gigabytes of GDDR7 and use the same GB203 GPU die. Instead, the 5080 is also just super expensive and resupplies are looking even worse in terms of pricing. While we've largely been focusing on GeForce cards in this video so far, Radeon models are also going to be affected, though not quite in the same way. As far as we're aware, no RDNA 4 models are currently discontinued or hitting end-of-life status, so there's a strong possibility the RX 9070 XT will have an effective monopoly against a non-existent slash discontinued 5070 Ti. However, prices are already rising for that model and will continue to rise thanks to VRAM price increases. The 9070 XT was selling for around $600 US in November on Newegg. That's up to a minimum of $700 today, if not more like $730 or $740. Essentially, back in November, the 9070 XT was 18% cheaper than the 5070 Ti at retail. Today, it's 16% cheaper, with both models having risen in price substantially. This difference between the cards may change if the 5070 Ti disappears entirely. That would really send the 5070 Ti price skyrocketing as supply evaporates, but the 9070 XT simply will not be $600 anymore. That price was very short-lived, and anyone that purchased one at that price got pretty lucky. Across the rest of AMD's lineup, we're seeing the 9070 priced at $580 to $600 US, up around $50 from end of 2025 prices. So this model hasn't been as affected by VRAM price increases just yet, but over time we're expecting a similar impact to the 9070 XT. The 9060 XT 16GB is also up $50 from November prices, now sitting at $400 US. Interestingly, the 8GB model is also $50 more expensive despite having half the memory, so the prices of these models will be something to track across the coming months, especially if we see the 16GB card starting to have more of a price increase than the 8GB model. If the 5070 Ti and 5060 Ti 16GB truly exit the market entirely and hit end-of-life status across a wide range of AIBs due to supply issues, this presents as a huge opportunity for AMD. Yes, competing Radeon cards will certainly be more expensive than they were last year, but if they're actually available, they could be the go-to options in those price ranges almost by default. AMD should be doing everything they can to supply these GPUs and eat some margin if they have to, all with the goal of improving their market share. And given RDNA 4 GPUs use GDDR6 memory, whereas Nvidia are stuck using GDDR7, which we understand is more expensive, they potentially have the chance to continue supplying cards with less of an impact to price. 
With that said, I'm not holding my breath for any of that to happen. AMD have a track record of tripping over their feet when an opportunity arises, and I wouldn't be surprised to see them copy Nvidia, something that they love to do, and put the 9070 XT into end of life status as well. After all, AMD's latest initiative for their Radeon drivers is an AI bundle, which of course is a high priority for gamers and not something the vast majority have absolutely no interest in whatsoever. The other problem here is that with 16 gigabyte cards becoming harder to come by, either through absurd pricing or the cards going end of life, this means inadequate 8 gigabyte models will become the focus. By all accounts, Nvidia are going to try to force 8GB cards on gamers, whether they like it or not, and as we've covered on the channel countless times, these cards are already obsolete. So that sucks. The RTX 5060 becoming the only model in decent supply is very bad news for people looking to upgrade, as those upgrades will be to a card that has no longevity whatsoever. At this point, let's hope those rumours of Nvidia bringing back the RTX 3060 with 12GB of VRAM are true, but I wouldn't hold my breath for that either. Lastly, what is the current status on the RTX 50 Super Series? Well, from discussions with various partners and industry sources at CES, AIBs were originally expecting the Super Series to debut at CES when they begun planning for the show. Nvidia's decision to not launch these GPUs at the show was a source of frustration for some partners that had planned a large CES presence based on being able to show off these cards, and they were left trying to fill the gaps with other products. As for where things currently stand, our understanding is there are no imminent plans to launch the Super Series. This is because the main new feature of these cards was supposed to be increased VRAM capacities, and the economics of those models have been thrown out the window now that memory is so expensive. Everyone is waiting to see where the memory prices settle, and if things are favourable, we might see the Super Series in the second half of 2025. If things are looking bad, Nvidia will most likely cancel the lineup entirely, as they don't want to launch these GPUs too close to the next generation models set for release in 2027. Anyway, in short, GPU prices are all sorts of effed up. If you're interested in buying a GPU, we recommend doing so as soon as possible before things get even worse. So thanks for watching. If you do want to support what we do, consider joining our Patreon. I'm going to go cry in a bathtub, and I'll see you in the next one.